Once upon a time, there was a woman who set out to discover the meaning of life. First, she read everything that she could get her hands on, history, psychology, philosophy, religion. While she became a very smart person, nothing she read gave her the answer that she was looking for. So she found other smart people and asked them of the meaning of life. But while their discussions were long and lively, no two of them ever agreed. Finally, still searching, she put all of her belongings in storage and set off to find her answer to the meaning of life. She went to South America and to India. Everywhere she went, people told her that they did not know the meaning of life, but they had heard of a man who did, only they were not sure where he lived. She asked about this man in every country she went to until finally, deep in the Himalayas, someone told her how to reach this, this man's house, a tiny little hut perched on a mountain just below the tree line. So she climbed until she reached this fellow's front door. And when she got there, with knuckles so cold they barely worked, she tapped on the door. And the, a kindly looking old man opened it and said yes. And uh, she thought she'd die of happiness. She was just so joyous to see this fellow. And she told him, I have come halfway around the world to ask you one question. What is the meaning of life? Please come in and have some tea, the old man said. No, 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 I, I mean, no, no, thank you. I, I didn't come all this way for tea. I came for an answer. Won't you tell me, please, what is the meaning of life? We shall have tea, the old man said. And so she gave up, went on in, sat down. Now, while he was brewing the tea, she caught her breath, and then she began telling him about all the books that she had read, all the people she had met, all the places she had been. The old man listened, which was just as well, since he didn't, she didn't let him get a word in edgewise. And as she talked, he placed a fragile teacup in her hand. And then he began to pour tea. She was so busy talking that she did not notice when the teacup was full. So the old man just kept on pouring until tea poured out the sides into the floor in a steaming waterfall of hot liquid. What are you doing? She yelled when the tea burned her hand. It's full. Can't you see that? Stop. There's no more room. Just so, the old man told her, you come here wanting something for me, but what am I to do? There's no more room in your cup. Come back when it's empty, then we will talk. A story told by Barbara Brown Taylor to help understand this passage we read today about Nicodemus. Nicodemus, who in John 3, goes to see Jesus. And Nicodemus is as learned as this woman is. She, he, Nicodemus is one who is a respected elder of the Jewish people. He has been trained, he has taught, he has spent his life teaching. And he comes to Jesus, and he makes a statement. He goes to Jesus, he meets him in the middle of the night, and he says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And if you think about how you sit down and talk to someone, that, that is kind of an odd way to begin, to show up and, and tell them what you already know. It's like he's showing up and he's just wanting, the, he's just wanting Jesus to, to agree what, with what he is saying. And Jesus looks at him, Nicodemus, who has started by telling Jesus what he knows, what he's certain of already. And Jesus is, is far more patient than the old man of the story. Jesus does not pour scalding tea over his hands. But Jesus uh, does start explaining something. He says, no one can see the kingdom of God unless you are born Anothane. Now the Greek word there, anothane, is a funny word. It's kind of like another, it's, a word, it's, it's like a word we have in English. A word that, and here's how you spell that word in English. P-O-L-I-S-H. P-O-L-I-S-H. What word did I just spell? Polish. I spelled Polish. What did you hear? Polish, right? It's a word that can mean two very different things depending upon context. 
Now, thankfully, it's pronounced differently. It's spelled the same, it looks the same, but you pronounce it differently. Polish versus Polish. Anothane goes one step farther. Anothane means again or above, and you pronounce it the same way. So when you say anothane in Greek, you have to know the context to know what it means. Does it mean above or does it mean again? Now, Nicodemus, whose cup is very full and who is a very wise man, who has figured out everything he needs to know already, Nicodemus, what he hears is that Jesus has said again. Jesus has said, you must be born again. And so Nicodemus, you can hear how he begins to challenge Jesus. He says, you can't be born again. You can't go back into your mother's womb. That's not possible. You, and, and you can hear how he starts to wind up. He's about to scold and lecture Jesus for saying something that's just utter nonsense. And Jesus interrupts, no, 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 no. And this is that moment right there. Jesus points up. It's not again, it's above. I didn't say anothane, I said anothane. And, it, it, and Jesus then goes on to explain a little bit more. He's not talking about being born again. He's talking about being born from above. And above is where the Holy Spirit comes from. Above is where our Heavenly Father is. Above is from whence the kingdom of God descends. Above, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about acknowledging a Heavenly Father who is above. He's not talking about again. I mean, it, it, it's... And I can almost hear Jesus then go one step further and say to Nicodemus, Deuter, your cup is full. You came here full of knowledge, full of wisdom, full of understanding. Why did you bother coming if your cup was already full, if you were already so certain of what you believed, so certain of everything? Make some more room in your cup. Then let's see what happens. And Nicodemus, to give him credit, he does that. You notice what happens here. Thus far, Nicodemus has done two things. He has, he has said, this is who you are, Jesus. And then he has said, you're crazy for saying born again. And, he go, and now he goes to a question. And he stops saying, this is what I know. And, and now he, he looks at Jesus and he says, how? How is this possible? And what a difference it makes to go from statements to a question. Because... He says, how? Because he goes and makes a, he, he, he asks a question. Because he says, no, I have room for my cup. Fill me with what you, would, what you would add. Jesus begins to unfold the mysteries of who God is. He begins to unfold the mysteries of how God brings salvation. He begins to point out that just as the Jewish people were saved from the poisonous vipers in the desert when, when Moses put a bronze snake on a bronze stick and held it up and as the Jewish people looked up to their father, as they looked up to the snake, they were healed. This happens in Exodus. As, just as that is the way that God heals at that time, in the same way the Son of Man must be lifted up. And as you look up, Born from above. You see this whole looking up. Look up to Jesus. You will find forgiveness. You will find that you are loved. And as you look up, you will find that the Spirit moves. And as it moves in you, as, as you are called to become part of the church and in baptism, he talks about how by water and by Spirit we become part of what Jesus is doing in the world. And he goes on explaining about how all this works. And it all begins because... Nicodemus goes from making statements, this is what I know, and he starts asking a question. How is this possible? What's really interesting to ponder, and we'll never know the answer really, is when Nicodemus is sitting there, is he sitting there receiving and being pleased that now he is receiving? Or is he sitting there kind of annoyed that he didn't get what he expected? We don't know. But either way, as we look at the Gospel of John, this is one of the key moments in the Gospel of John. And we get to this point by, by a certain path. Three weeks ago, we started looking at the Gospel of John in the way that in the Gospel of John, you got to look twice. When you're looking at the Gospel of John, if you look once and you think you understand it, I can almost guarantee you you're wrong. you got to look twice. That's what John the Baptist does. He shows up to say, look. Now, now look again. Look at Jesus. He, look again. And so in the Gospel of John, you always got to look twice. There's always more going on. 
And last week we started looking at the signs that, that Jesus does to show who he is. The signs, we, we looked at the way he makes water into wine. A lot of wine. A lot of really good wine. And how this is the sign of abundance. And, and how the signs when Jesus heals and creates abundance are signs of what the kingdom of God is like. And now we turn to Nicodemus. And having looked at how we have to look again, having now looked at the signs and how the signs show us who Jesus is, this is the response. Nicodemus now comes to Jesus and he's intrigued. He wants to figure this out. He has seen the signs and now he's wanting to understand. And so now he comes and he asks this question, though it takes him a while to get to that question. And that's how the Gospel of John understands people coming to faith. Do you see something that intrigues you? about the church or about the spirit or about how God is working in the world and you look twice and then you come and you ask a question and then it starts from there. But it's all based upon this assumption. When you come and you're looking for answers, do you come and is your cup full or do you have room for what Jesus would offer you? Now there are two directions we can take from here. We can look at this as someone who has never come to Jesus before and we can look at this as someone who has come to Jesus again and again. We'll do both briefly. First, if, if you're someone who has any confusion about this, this idea of being born from above, the idea that, that we come to Jesus and we accept what he offers and we accept forgiveness and as we look up to our Heavenly Father, we find what we need. That as we are born of the water and of the Spirit and baptism, that we become part of the church and begin a lifetime of transformation. If this is anything new to you or this is something you need to figure out, then, then I invite you to come on forward after worship and let's sit down and talk about this. Because I believe the decision to accept Jesus, the decision to be born from above, the, Jesus, the decision to accept our Heavenly Father is the most important decision that we ever make. And so if you need to think on that, come on up. And we'll think on that together. So that's how we think about this passage if we've never come to Jesus before. For many of us, that is not the case. For many of us, we have come to Jesus again and again and again. And the question I'd have for those of us who have come to Jesus again and again and again is, is your cup empty? Do you come to Jesus with preconceptions and assumptions? Do you come to worship? Do you come to prayer? Do you come to scripture thinking you have it all figured out? Notice what a difference it makes when Nicodemus goes from thinking he has it all figured out to asking a question. And I invite you to do the same in your life. I invite you to bring your questions to prayer. Bring your questions to worship. Bring your questions to Bible study, to scripture, to, to, to my office. I love a good question. Bring your questions and see what happens. Quite believe that Jesus can fill us when we ask a question. For example, you might want to know more about this whole being born from above thing. We have being born again, that phrase, we have heard it for decades. It, it's been kind of a busy week. I intended to look into uh, where, what's the history of that phrase. Because it, it's not an ancient phrase. Being born again, that, that's not, that's not, that doesn't come up anywhere else in the Bible that I know of. And, and what we see in Nicodemus is, Nic in the Gospel of John, someone comes to Jesus, says something wrong, and then Jesus corrects them. And so what we see here is Nicodemus, he's the one who says born again, and then Jesus corrects him. And so if we're not going to talk about being born again, and we, want, we need to understand being born from above, what's that mean? Well, there's a lot to read about that. The Bible says quite a bit. The prophets talk about how the spirit moves and the, the water transforms. And, and we can talk, look at how Moses saves people in the desert through looking up to a, towards the heavenly father. We can talk about how baptism and born from above and acknowledging our heavenly father are all connected. That it's not about doing something again. It's acknowledging something that happened long ago. That we were made in the image of God and, and acknowledging that and accepting who we are. That's what it's about, being born from above. That might not be the only question you need to bring, though. You might have other questions. Other questions, not just about Scripture, but the questions of, of life and of faith. How can I forgive someone when I've been hurt? How can I forgive someone if they're dead? How can I forgive myself? How can I trust someone if I've been betrayed? 
how can I trust that God will provide if I give of my first fruits or even dare to try to give a tithe? How can I trust God to protect my children in the world such as it is, or my grandchildren? Can we trust God to walk with us through the, the sickness that will eventually come? Will I be able to endure what is in front of me? We might think we have the answers to these questions, but I'd wonder, does that mean your cup's full? And if your cup is full, if you think you have all the answers already, are you missing out on what Jesus might offer if you came to him with an empty cup? My friends, I invite you to empty your cups. Let go of your assumptions of what is possible and join me and join each other in turning to Jesus, trusting that just as he answered Nicodemus, he will answer us. He will answer us in scripture and prayer and hymns and worship and Bible study and time with other Christians. And we like, the, we like Nicodemus, we will find that when we approach Jesus, not with statements, not with certainties, not with assumptions, but when we approach him with questions, he will provide what it is that we need. Amen.